Hi there, I'm Christopher Harrison, Senior Program Manager, Microsoft Cloud and AI. Let's take a look at the syntax for some of the other Boolean options and switch statements inside of JavaScript. So again, I've got an empty code editor here. Let's start filling it up with, uh, with some code. Let's take a look at how we could do, first of all, implicit uh, statements or implicit False is what I'm going to call this file. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to say const and let's say name equals and let's use an empty string. And I'm going to go ahead and say if name then console.log we have a name. And let's for right now put in an else statement and I'll say uh, else console.log and no name provided. Cool. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and run this. We'll say node um, implicit false, hit enter. And you're going to notice that it gives us no name provided because that empty string automatically converted into a, uh, into a false. Now again, I could go ahead and use a Boolean to reverse that. So if I put in a Boolean here and I change my logic around like that, you'll notice that we're gonna get the same result, that it's going to tell me, again, no name provided. And the reason for that is because this is now going to become, in our case, true because it will convert that name to a false, change that back around to a true, and then go ahead and run it. Obviously, that's a little convoluted. Um, and, and it's also a big part of the reason why I try to avoid using that, um, that, that type of syntax and try to just avoid the negative whenever possible, um, just because it can lead to kind of more convoluted code. Um, and I always like my code to be nice and readable, you know? So I personally always try to aim for the positive whenever, uh, whenever possible. Um, I do want to highlight our case um, sensitive .js. So I'm going to say const name equals uh, Christopher. And let's go ahead and say if um, name, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to say, um, I'll say status. There we go. That's going to work a little bit better. I'll say status. And I'm going to say if status equals equals um, equals error, then we'll go ahead and print out console log something went wrong. Otherwise, console.log looks great. Cool. Okay. So now if I go ahead and uh, run this, I'm going to say node, um, oops, case sensitive.js, what's going to happen is it will come back and say, looks great, which is not what we were expecting. Well, we should have been expecting this. Um, and the reason for that is, again, our string comparisons are going to be case sensitive. So one way that you could handle this is by doing a two uppercase, in, in my case, see what I did there? So um, now it's going to convert to uppercase, and now it will give us an error message. So now when I run this, it tells us something went wrong, which is what we were expecting. Now, that's one way that you can do it. I do, again, want to highlight that locale compare. You can go check the supporting docs for a bit more information on that. Now, I want to close this out by taking a look at using AND statements here um, and also using switch. So first of all, let's say AND.js, and I'll say uh, const status equals 200, and I'll say if status uh, equals 200, console log OK, and 
else if status um, equals 400 or there it is on my keyboard status equals 500 then we'll go ahead and console.log um, error and now our else statement down there at the very bottom and I'll go ahead and say console.log and unknown status. Cool. All right. And now if I go ahead and I run this, this would give me an OK. Let me have a display in error. I'm going to say 500. So let me clear down below node and I'm going to say and.js and when I run this it's going to display out error because again it's set to 500. Okay now as highlighted in the slide I could also do this by using a switch statement. So I'm again going to do a nice little side-by-side -side comparison here so we can see the same logic. So I'm going to say const status equals 500 and I'm going to say uh, switch and I'll put status in there. So this is going to switch if you will or check the status and if it's 200 then we'll go ahead and say console log uh, OK. If it's and I know I'm doing something wrong here and I'm doing it on purpose so I'm going to say case 400 and I'll say case 500. This is an or here. So either one of those match. It'll say console.log and error. And then finally, our default. This is basically our else statement, if we will. We're going to say console.log and we'll say unknown status. And something really funny is going to happen. That when I run this node switch.js, it's going to print out both error and unknown status. And the reason for that is that silent fall through that we were talking about previously. That if we don't stop it, it's just going to keep going to the next one, and to the next one, and to the next one. So we want to make sure that we're always putting in a break statement here. And I'm just going to copy and paste to make my life a little bit easier here. That without, without it, it's just going to fall through everything. And if my status was 200, it would have printed out OK, error, and unknown status, which again, not what we're looking for. So I'm going to leave that with our breaks now. Now we'll go ahead and run that. Now we get error. It's doing just that one in the middle, which is exactly what we were looking for. Yes, we were looking for an error. And so that uh, is a couple of the other options available to you when it comes to Boolean logic and JavaScript and how we can use a switch statement and how it compares to writing out an if statement. One last little thing I want to highlight before we close it all out is remember again that with a switch statement, this is a big difference here, why you might decide to use an if as opposed to a switch, is a switch statement can only check for a quality. It's only checking for equals. You're not able to do a less than or greater than directly inside of a switch. And so there it all is.